Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the last part of our series of the PocketNow Throwback. We're taking a look at the old legendary IPAC 3650, which came out of the gate in 2000, running an operating system called Pocket PC 2000. It didn't have Wi-Fi, it didn't have phone functionality, it had a horrible display, but it really revolutionized mobile devices and a computing power that you could fit into your pocket. So in this video, we're going to compare it to a present day device, the HTC Touch Pro 2, running the version of Windows Mobile 6.5 that we'll be shipping on devices coming up in the in the fall of 2009. And we're going to kind of compare this experience to see how far we've come and how far we really haven't come with Windows Mobile. So we're going to turn on both devices. And right away you can see the contrast in the screen. They use different screen technologies uh, and obviously the resolution on the Touch Pro 2 is much, much, much greater than you will find on the iPack. So let's take out a stylus so we can kind of control things. So back in Pocket PC 2000 and 2003, we saw Microsoft bring forward this concept of the Today screen, and we still have that today. The idea of the Today screen is that in one glance, you should be able to see your next appointment, your next uh, task, who has called you, who has texted you, who has messaged you, everything in one screen. Because most of us are busy people, we have a lot going on, and our device should show us in one quick glance what we're doing versus the iPhone where you have to drill into every application to see where you need to be, who has called, um, you know, what messages you have, things of that nature. So the Today screen actually uh, has been replaced in Windows Mobile 6.5 with what they call Titanium. And this is kind of a more expansive version of the Today screen. So instead of just... Uh, owner information, upcoming appointments, messages and tasks. We have pictures and music, missed calls, voicemail, text messages, which have become huge in the last nine years, uh, email, calendar, and favorites. So a really very versatile way to see all of your stuff. And we can actually revert back to the old, old Windows Mobile Today screen quite simply. We just turn this off and we hit all of these things. And now we're back to the standard old today screen that lets you see all of that information in one glance. It's not necessarily the most beautiful screen, but it's very customizable. And anyone that's been using Windows Mobile will tell you that you can just customize the heck out of this screen. You could have icons for people you want to call and weather and stocks and pretty much anything you need to see you can customize on the today screen. So let's drill into the start menu, which obviously previous to 6.5 was a drop down menu, kind of like you get on the desktop version of, of uh, Windows. But now in Windows Mobile 6.5, you get a larger finger-friendly um, list of programs. A big focus in 6.5 is on finger-friendly optimization because that's really where touch phones are going in. No longer do people want to use a stylus. So we can go into programs to see how limited the amount of programs, and we'll kind of compare things here. So let's start with games. And as we talked about in a previous video, what once was called Jawbreaker is now called Bubble Breaker, but they do basically the same thing. These are the stock games that come with Windows Mobile for the longest time. And then we have good old Solitaire, which Microsoft uh, <laughs> also puts on all of its desktop version, versions of Windows, which hasn't changed very much. The resolution's a little higher, but that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at some other programs to see how they've changed. Let's go into the calendar application. And again, this hasn't changed very much, but of course you can get third-party programs like uh, Pocket Informant to really spruce up your calendar. So we can go to the next view, which is day. We can go to the next view here, which is uh, the month view. This is the week view and the month view. Again, it's very similar to how it was nine years ago. Uh, what is different and what you're going to notice here is that the buttons on the bottom are different. Back in, I believe, Windows Mobile 5.0, they introduced standardized soft keys on the left and the right. So instead of having a bunch of buttons here, you just had two menus, but that created another problem, right? So now we have menus after menus in some screens, not here, but sometimes we'll have an over arrow, then we'll have an over arrow, and before you know it, you have many, many different screens. Windows Mobile 7 is likely to finally fix this problem. Let's go into the contacts application to see what that looks like. Again, contacts application, not much has changed. You can type in the name up here. Here you have an alphabet. You can jump right to it. Although, um, if you have a lot of contacts here, you'll actually get the alphabet along the side. We can tap on new, tap on new, Outlook contact. 
pretty much the same thing. Um, something that HTC has done is spruced up this screen so that when you have a newer device like the Touch Pro 2 and you're running TouchFlow 3D, you get a nicer looking display here rather than the dull Windows Mobile contact form that hasn't been updated in ages or really since the beginning. So let's zoom out again and take a look at some other programs quickly um, that we have loaded onto here, such as Pocket Word. Pocket Word is hardly changed, um, although it was called Pocket Word then, now it's called Word Mobile. Although Word Mobile can read, obviously, 2007 file formats and that sort of thing. A really quick uh, reference to the keyboard, this is the only keyboard that you could get back in the days of the Pocket PC, but now you have the HTC keyboard, which is fantastic, and you can use your thumbs to type, you can turn it into landscape to get a widescreen keyboard. Back in the days of Pocket PC, you had the tap-tap keyboard that you had to use with the stylus, and you really couldn't use your finger to type here buttons were way too small. But this is really HTC's changes, and uh, Microsoft is very fortunate that HTC is a hardware partner, and they've made all of these changes to Windows Mobile to really bring it up to speed to where other mobile phone operating systems are. What I want to do now is kind of drill into settings to see what settings are the same and what's different, and you're going to find that they're pretty much the same. Uh, it looks a little different on the right here because the menu system has been changed for 6.5, but we still get personal system and connections, and here is personal system and connections, so we're going to go to the system tab, and we get pretty much the same items. We have the about, um, certificates, and let's see the difference in the about screen. Looks about the same. The tabs have been kind of rounded off in Windows Mobile 6.5. That's one of the problems with Windows Mobile 6.5. It doesn't go back to the previous menu screen that you were in before. So we'll go back into System. Take a look at memory here. Obviously, modern-day Windows Mobile devices have a lot more free memory. So we have 120 megabytes of free RAM, which is great. But over here, as you saw before, we only have 5 megabytes of free RAM. And, of course, this doesn't have flick scrolling. I just tried to do flick scrolling. You have to use the sidebar completely and totally. And in personal, you still get the same old screen that you get for um, the, the Today screen. They actually brought it out in one level. So you can change the theme of the Today screen, or you can go to Items and choose which items you want to have on the, um, on the Today screen. And obviously, there are more that have been added in this particular, on this particular device. We have TouchFlow 3D and Windows Default, which is Titanium. And right now we have just the standard Windows Mobile stuff uh, turned on. So settings really hasn't changed. The menus to get into them look a little bit different, but at its core, they are the same settings that there were uh, many years ago. So overall, at least from a visual standpoint, Windows Mobile, or Pocket PC, hasn't changed that much in the last nine years. We still have the basic same thing at its core, although they're running different versions of Windows CE, although there's a lot of different underlying technologies, but visually speaking, um, they're very much similar, which is a good and a bad thing. It's good because developers have had a ton of time to customize the interface. You can totally revamp the entire Windows Mobile operating system to really be your own. Um, but it's bad because a end user gets it and they want something that looks awesome out of the box and Sometimes Windows Mobile doesn't bring that unless you're getting a Touch Pro 2 or one of the newer devices that has the whole customization. So we hope you enjoyed the look at the old Compaq iPad. It was a legendary device that really brought a lot of change to the world of Windows Mobile. We're looking forward to the next evolution of Windows Mobile as we see the 6.5.1 or the interim release before 7. And of course, we're looking very much forward to uh, Windows Mobile 7 and all the awesome hardware to come. So that's it for the look at the old iPad. 3650. That's it for now.